Jesus, gotta love that. Thank you so much, very much appreciated. And another box here, a cabin filter. We just did one of these. In fact, you made a big it's deal about that. The same kind too. Yeah, that must be a, a popular one right now. And, ooh, gotta love this. Some gift cards, thank you so much. Very, very appreciated. Wow, look at that. That is awesome, and it looks like he got the parts to rebuild the shifter, so while we're doing the clutch, we'll go ahead and take care of that. And a few other TLC things, that's part of it. It's kind of like, you know, while it's here in our care, and the customer like this give us free reign, there's a lot of extra little things that we like to do, given the opportunity. Now, he said the battery was kind of weak. and it started pretty slow when we verified that so we're gonna put a new battery in it and he basically said if there's anything else you think of while it's here and we really liked the idea of changing the wheels wheels and tires on the AP1 really look dated so we're gonna try and get some AP2 wheels and take care of that while it is here that's our plan so we're gonna try and put that in motion and we'll keep working on this and the wheel and tire thing will go on behind the scenes he's doing coilovers so that will really, really come together with wheels and tires, coilovers and brakes. And of course, the soft top really going to transform this car. I can't wait to see the before and after pictures of this one. So this certainly needed a clutch. Look at the hot spots. And look at the clutch, it's down to the rivets. Yep. All right, so we're doing the FX300. This is our clutch kit. If you buy it, you can get it in the store. It's gonna come with all the things that you need to do it right. All the parts that wear out that you might not have on hand. Main seal, transmission main seal, the slide, the new rubber boot, of course the, the Nietzsche bearing and the pilot bearing. Well, also, if it's a 2000 to 2003, we're going to supply you with brand new drive shaft bolts. These are hardened bolts. So we now have the bolts for the front and we now have them for the rear. So we're going to give you the whole set because we have had some issues with the rear bolts. When you remove the drive shaft to put the clutch in, those bolts sometimes don't come out very easy and you kind of mesh the Allen right here, the hex. These are hardened. You're not going to mash these up. They're going to be reusable, much, much better quality. So you're going to get front and back if you purchase them in the store. So brakes are done, they just got to be bled, but look how much nicer that is. We decided to do this just part of our TLC, this customer has come a long way and he is doing a pretty large build. And I think doing the wheels and the brakes to finish it off, the calipers really need to be done. Now he opted for our coilovers. We have a couple of different coilover options. We offer the Body Club and the Skunk 2 Pro C's and the Pro ST's. Now these I like, they have a ton of adjustability. They've got a pretty nice ride, even in soft mode. They actually ride better than the factory stuff. But you've got a lot of adjustability. You can obviously change the spring tension and the height separately, and of course, the rebound. So we've had good luck with these. And again, I don't sell things just because they're the most profitable option. I like to get feedback. We have about 25 sets of these and the body clubs out on the street. We've had good feedback. No issues, no breaking, no leaking. No squeaking, anything that's uh, gonna give us any concern. So we tend to sell what we use. I have these on the S2000 that we're building for the shop to the red car. Um, if I was to give a rough idea, adjustability, I would say the body clubs are adjustable from say one to six. And if I was to say these adjustability, I'd say these are two to 10, if that makes sense. 
it's got a lot higher range you can go stiffer you can go a lot harsher on the rebound but overall both very very similar All right, so the customer provided the new tail lights. They're like an AP2 lookalike. They're LED, but they're designed to fit exactly in the AP1, much newer design. The factory AP1 has the incandescent lights. They look kind of old and dated. The bulbs, you know, look kind of, you know, orangeish, and they don't light up very fast. They're just kind of slow to react. This is easy install. This you're going to remove the bulbs and then eight millimeter nuts which is going to take out the whole light assembly it's pretty easy on the s2000 light comes out and then the new one goes back in the exact same way it fits perfect i'm actually quite impressed with these lights they look nice quality so plug everything in put the hazards on find out the signals are not working so check the wire in i do have power in the back so i kind of check this by just Replacing the bulb, put in a factory bulb back here just to make sure we do have power and obviously check it with a test light. Well, the problem is the continuity on the LEDs are wired backwards. So it's easier just to change the wires in the factory harness, basically change these around. The continuity needs to be the way around. They're LED lights, so they are a diode. They only work one way. So easy to switch these wires. And then in the event it's ever changed back to factory, the factory bulb doesn't care, doesn't care the polarity, it'll work completely fine. So de-pin this plug, change these pins around and plug it back in. This is something I should, if I could find the manufacturer, I would let them know because if you don't know this, you buy these lights, you plug them in and the signals don't work, you're going to be upset. You're probably going to think the uh, lights don't work. So put it back in the housing, everything should work. And again, this is the factory bulb. Just to show you, it does work. Again, the factory bulb doesn't care the polarity. So this is the tail light. It has like the bayonet type fit in like the factory bulb. So it fits in one way. Put it back together, plug the other harnesses in there and we'll verify it does work. So just the polarity is wrong. Pretty easy fix, but again, if you didn't know that, you might assume the lights don't work. So these definitely look nicer. I like the LED, much crisper. They react faster. The reverse lights are insanely bright. That's definitely something that is a plus. So pretty easy install. If I can find the manufacturer or where he bought them, I'll go ahead and link it in the description. But everything fits back just the way the factory was designed. And now you got much newer looking tail lights. All right, so the new tires came in. These are the Hancock V12 Evos. We've got good luck with these. These are 10 millimeters wider than the factory size. They're 255 instead of 245. They look a little bit better on the rim. It gives it a little bit more of a meaty look and of course 10 millimeters wider for a little bit more traction. Now these are a good all round tire. We've had good luck with these. We used these over the years. They are, I believe, a 320 tread wear. So they're not gonna you're not going to burn these off too quick but they are fairly sticky good all round they are a performance tire but a whole lot better than the ones that were on it right here these are just a really junk tire and of course like we showed you completely the wrong size so the wheel should be back hopefully tomorrow we'll get these mounted get them on the car and it's going to make a huge difference you'll be amazed the difference of ap2 wheels 
versus those uh, five spoke VP walls. This is a tune that we have used several times. Uh, we're waiting for the intake to come back from powder coat, the heat shield, um, the brackets for the catch can. We have a few of those getting powder coated. That should be here. But we can do like the initial break in, bleed the coolant, make sure everything is happy. And everything looks good. Everything sounds good. And uh, we'll do some initial break in on the clutch. And then once those parts are back, once the intake is back, uh, we'll put on the dyno and start tuning. Uh, this is going to be available in our store, by the way. Uh, we're going to sell it as a kit like this because we've tried all kinds of kits. We've tried the vacuums. And as you see, it's burping the air out. And as it burps, it's dribbling in here. It works very well. Uh, wheel shoved it back. Uh, in a couple of days, the tires are already here. I showed you those. But see how much better it looks with the refinish plates. Like I said, that was part of our TLC. We didn't charge him for that, but he's doing a pretty extensive build. The top will be done when we're finished dynoing it. He's opting for a different top. We'll show you that when we put it on. But let's do the initial break in. I'm going to go over the uh, calibration for the idle and cold start and that kind of stuff. Then we'll get it back on the dyno. And then we'll get it on the dyno when those parts come back from powder coat. lowered it down the initial height is off it's a little higher in the back but because it has mismatched tires we're gonna, not going to spend too much time playing with the coilovers obviously the tire size is all wrong on this it's got front tires on the back and all kinds of things so when the wheels come back we get the tires put on we'll go ahead and set the height and get it absolutely perfect so right now we're waiting for the heat shield to come back the intakes on but the heat shield that you saw goes here that should be ready later today. Wheels should be ready in a couple of days, but for right now, we can break in the clutch and get on the dyno, start tuning. So this is the motor that quit on the fan that the terminal broke off, and it was this guy right here. Well, the guy that tested it said, basically this terminal here and this terminal here will fire it up. And of course, this is the ground, or if you're in England, earth. So we need, uh, looks like a yellow, and a white and that one looks like a black with a yellow and black let's look at the fan wiring so for all you green guys this is the way to go this is working right now with no motor there is a windy type noise outside but that is obviously nothing to do with the fan moving on its own so yep that's it that's how much air is moving so let's throw this away and uh, that power cord we can get rid of that you know what we could do? That would be awesome. Let's put the belt on it, connect it to the motor, and sell the power back to the power company. <laughs> just like window. just like the guy on the on the YouTube tells you how to do. Sell it back to the power company. If you have one of these boxes on the side of your house, you could be selling power back to the power company with our perpetual energy fan. Keep that in mind. It needs to be like that. Or like that. One of the two. Doesn't that wheel almost look square on that Mustang on the back too? It's only flat on the bottom. It almost looks square from here. It does, doesn't it? It's like the C8 Corvette steering wheel. Yeah. It looks like the C. <laughs> it's a tire. <laughs> All right, so not the best environment to be doing some wiring, but I'll put my eyelets on here, and I'm gonna put white to white, black to black, and hopefully the motor spins the right way, 
and then I'll put the ground uh, over here and hopefully it works. Thank you, Esther. You're welcome. That is so nice. It's a fancy one. It is a fancy drink. I went fancy today. It says Grand Fancy Drink. Grand Fancy. Is it just a white mocha with some fanciness in it? It is. It's just white mocha fancy. Awesome. Thank you. I'm yeah, toiling over here on a fan with a storm brewing in the background yeah. and live electrical cables. I'm doing this to add some more excitement to it. I left it plugged in. Don't, don't do that. I'm just, I'm just kidding. I don't know which one's hot and which one's not, so I just unplugged the whole lot. That's probably a good idea. Yeah, it really is, because <laughs> I'm just going by what the motor guy told me, black to black, white to white, green is, uh, is brown. Yeah, because it's a little smelly in here. Yeah, well... Uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, yeah, what yeah, do you expect? Yeah, it's it's not, you. It's not the car, ah, it's George. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> That's why we keep uh, 14 foot social distancing. I thought it was a little human-y. <laughs> <laughs> so it's running? Yeah. How do you like this? I love it. Are you sure? There's a lot of people on the internet that tell you that you shouldn't. You yeah. should like what they like. People said they don't like this? Yeah, they said that you should like what they like. Oh, it's they called the not. internet. No, they really don't. They did not. You should have bought insert your favorite car here that's how the internet works esther yeah. you're not supposed to love it you're supposed to love what other people i love. i love this new feature which is the heads up display it's awesome it yes. shows you like the road it shows you the maps up there it plays movies yeah through here too shut up well actually but that's I, the jdm I might, version i might need to get you know a new phone according to the uh the representative yeah that guy uh, that guy at nissan work. is trying to also it has the open on every single door handle now it used yeah, to be just nice. the was it just the driver side or it, driver side no it was both the uh, front doors but not not the back doors but so now it has door. everything as well as in the back too and then, well yeah and then well don't look at the kids stuff in the back but i do love these these are great built-in shades built-in shades Let me go around here so it works that's nice because every time you see kids, they're always jamming shirts up there and towels and yeah. who knows what. And the interior is, I gotta say, so soft. I'm pretty jealous of the interior because it's that Napa leather. Oh, it's really, really soft. This I mean, is pretty sweet. Yeah. I've got a video, I'll, I'll give them a preview, but we did something to it that this road, it has everything except one thing. It drives by itself, which yes. I gotta say, it kind of makes you feel seasick. It doesn't really. It's, it's just that. You're not used to it, and it and I, I think the problem is is it wants you to have your hands on the wheel. But and when I, you, you don't activate, want to have the, your hands on the wheel because no. it's driving. You want it to pulls you. To... It pulls on the wheel, but it feels like it wants to keep so precisely on a line so that the line has a little bit of a e e the I'm car does this it. Around like I need yeah, this. yeah. You throw you throw that in our trash can, which is also known as top of a fan. <laughs> so <laughs> it has all <laughs> kinds of uh, digital wink wax and stuff. It didn't come with the home link mirror and Esther was absolutely devastated because she had to have one of those clickers, you know, like you know. hanging off, which all the tech that it has, usually people with nice cars, cars that they're proud of, put them in the garage. So why wouldn't you include a oh home link, even though they did on all of the other models? but not this one, so we rectified that. Check out the video. We installed the home link, and for you, if there is anybody out there that's thinking the same thing, I show you how to do this. It isn't something I usually do. I don't give away secrets, because... Uh, the uh, salesman was like, well, it might be in the Nissan Connect. Well, Nissan Connect, sorry, not bashing you or anything, but you have to pay for Nissan Connect. So now I have to pay to open my garage door to use you gotta Nissan You got to pay to play, Esther. Come on. Is that how that works? Yes, like, come I on. don't know. Don't be cheap. I'm not saying that it does, but it seems like if you have to pay for Nissan, now I have to pay to open my own garage door. That's not. Don't be cheap, Datsun. That's not cool. All right, you know what we should do? It's called Rady, because he did a review on a couple of these things. And he, uh, I got to give props to him because I watched all of his, his, uh, his videos before Esther was looking at this thing, just to see what Rady thought about it. But... It's got all kinds of cool stuff. The Even comes with uh, the camera. Coffees. Turn that on. That's the best. Um, the, the sticker right there is that button. Just hit it. Make work without doing yeah, anything. It's super clear. Yeah, look how clear. Look at the 360 camera. Oh, you can't see me. I, I can't mean, see we're all kind of tight here, system. but it shows you. I mean, look at this. Hit it again. And because I have Sirius, it tells me the weather. Look at that. Oh, look at that. It's Can't so you go in here and actually? Look yeah, at you the can weather. look at all kinds of stuff. I don't know where it's at. I haven't played with it enough. Can't you just press it? No. Sauce? Press it? No. Call, let's call Rady and go, yeah, listen, I can you come over here? He's played with this thing. I don't know how to do it. it, it. But it I showed the weather. Last time I was playing around, it had the whole weather on here. What about that? No, it was dim and bright. I don't know. 
If you call Rady, he's just going to tell you how many Twinkies fit in the door. <laughs> he will. <laughs> yeah. That's, That's something that he promotes in his video. He, I think he is sponsored by Twinkie. If not, he is really working hard to get sponsored by Twinkie. Because eventually they're going to send him a container well, to his are, house. They're kind of expensive Twinkies, right? Yeah, I guess. No. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But I guess you could put a whole bunch of Twinkies in there. All right. Moment of truth. Let me see if my fan wiring works. I've got to say I'm a little bit nervous about doing this because I'm not a big fan of doing house wiring. Car wiring is one thing, but house wiring... Not a big fan, you ready? All right, fingers crossed. Nice. Oh, hurry, oh, oh, oh. Wow, I kind of scared me, I don't remember it coming on that quick. It's amazing how much better a fan works when it's cooler outside. Yeah. <laughs> what, is, what is 98 outside, these things just make a noise and spin and you don't really feel a whole lot from it, but when it's kind of, I mean, I don't mean to say it's chilly, uh, you know, it's uh, 81 degrees, um, in front of the fan, it feels, it feels cold. So everything is good here, but we're making less power than we should. Air fuel is good, and no timing changes here, but as you see, it's got a little bit, uh, a bit of inconsistency. We're thinking it could be airflow. So we're gonna do a quick experiment, drop the exhaust and run it open header just to eliminate the potential restriction and go from there. So it's gonna be loud. It's gonna sound like a race car, but it's good for science, right? here in the turbo through the downpipe. Yeah. This is where I need to get my hat and turn it backwards. <laughs> I'm definitely going to use ear protection this time because that last open header run on your car that left my a, ears ringing. That was a for, bit different. <laughs> yeah, I got to tell you, it left my ears ringing for probably a month. Probably done permanent hearing damage, but uh, that's the price for uh, the fame, right? So let's put the fan on. Let's do a full run. Let's see where we are at. You guys are going to love this. except to drop and run open header. So, uh, I guess that means it needs an exhaust right there. That is a big jump. That's 50 horsepower, really. And uh, probably 30 foot-pounds of torque, so. All right, so after reviewing the logs, it's actually about 0.4 pound increase as well. So not only did it increase flow, which you see a lot of it is right here. You see how not only was it kind of doing this, this is a little bit smoother, but you see how it kind of falls off pretty heavily while this one is still continuing to climb. The torque is falling off, but not at the same rate. Look at this difference here as it falls. So we're waiting to hear back from the customer, say if he wants to do an exhaust, but uh, aftermarket exhaust, larger diameter should be pretty much the same right there. That really finishes it off, don't it? So he gave us the okay, by the way. He just said, yeah, go ahead. You guys know what you're doing. It needs the exhaust. He wants the additional power. We've got to keep it on the quiet side. He wants to keep it stealth. So muffler is uh, ceramic coated black. And we'll show the exhaust is, uh, when we're done. But we need to get cranking on this because once the exhaust is done, we've got to get on the top and a few other little things. We want to clean it. Wheels and tires. George just went to talk to them about wheels. We're on schedule with those, right? Yep, Monday. They're good. Sweet. Wheels should be back. We'll take them over to Dave, get the tires put on. We'll be rocking and rolling. We always like to stay a day, two days ahead. Look how bad the offset is on that because it's got the wrong tire on there. It's got a 205 on a back wheel. Look at that, it sinks in. The wheels are gonna make such the difference. So let's get rolling on this. Better yet, just take the camera. All right, is it on? Yeah, it's rolling, it's right. rolling, it's hot. All right, so there's the heat shield that I just showed you on the table in the car, the air filter is the rubber in between the two so I don't need to run like another piece in there 
the air filter is doing that for me. It's shielded. It's blocked on the bottom. Can that be a YouTube turd? Yeah. YouTube turd, by the way, is someone that points out the absolute obvious and finds anything negative in a nice picture. That's the YouTube turd. I'm going to get t-shirts made YouTube turd. <laughs> Guys, you don't have any vents here. What are this stuff? Why are these open? That bracket was at the powder you know coat, too. Good. You know that's bad for the motor, right? Is it? Yeah. No, it's not. Oh, okay. I'm just trying to be yeah. a YouTube turd. Our catch can bracket was at the powder coater. It came back with this as well. So we're going to get the catch can on. He approved the exhaust. We're going to do the exhaust, and then we'll put it right back over here, and hopefully the red line that you probably can't see will be the same line but with an exhaust on it. The nice thing about this is it shows there's absolutely zero vapor coming out of here with these open. Oh yeah, they're not, not even, wet at all. Even during the video, I was uh, through the run, I was watching there was no vapor here. Yeah. So that's uh, that's always a good sign. The motor seemed fresh when we did the retainers, but look how pretty that is. Once, everything is, once everything's finished, it really comes together, doesn't it? Yep. It's such a great setup. Unbelievable. All right, as for his like buried in work, I'm gonna go run to Wawa, see if they have any Wawa burgers they've been teasing us on the radio all week <laughs> so if not we'll just get our standard sandwiches but esther is esther doesn't get stressed she just looks busy now me i'll be stressed out but she's doing pretty well but i want to leave her alone okay so to wawa it is now it's one of those days that i always like to be ahead um i don't know what the the uh, personality is that i have a friend of mine described it very well steve but if I tell you the car is gonna take eight days, which is what we allow for a build like this, I like to be done day five, day six. And the last couple of days is driving the car, making sure it's happy, cleaning it, make sure it's 100%. If there's any little knickknack things that we can see, if there's any bolts we can change, or sometimes the customer second to last day will call and say, hey, can you go ahead? and put suspension and brakes on it. Well, being ahead, we can make that happen. Also, what we do is in that time where we are ahead, if we have little things coming in the door, which we get a lot, somebody wants a valve cover, you know, uh, a fittings welded on or an oil pan, or uh, can you cut this exhaust and change the flange? We can fit that kind of stuff in, but I like to be ahead. And not that we're behind, but we're not as ahead as I like to be. Does that make sense? Not from a business standpoint, it's probably not the best business model, but for a passion model and an individual person that owns a car model, it works the best. We only work on one car at a time. I don't want a parking lot full of cars and just kind of run through the, the lot and see which one we want to work on based on what parts we have. That's the way I would want my car done. I don't want to drop it off while it's one of 10. I want it to be the only one. So. It makes sense. Time to eat. All right, shout out to my little buddy, Sebastian, for giving me the mask. He actually got a couple of these and he said, you know what, dad, these are really comfy. And of course he's in school, so he has to wear one all the time. And he gave me one of his and it fits. It's a little bit, it takes a little bit of stretching, but it fits. So thank you for the mask. It's nice, I like it. Have to get up, get two kids ready, take them to school, get to work mom's dad's whatever whoever is doing it i gotta give you credit i just did it my wife's out of town for a few days and doing it is like <sighs> stressful so we're here or i'm here george is on his way he's up to do the same thing so we have quite a few orders in the store right now uh it's monday morning so over the weekend there is quite a few orders in there so thank you so much we are going to get this done and out and one of the reasons i don't ship to some countries is it's just too expensive and i put myself in the position of the customer i can't see buying a stupid t-shirt for 50 bucks it's just i gotta keep it reasonable uh i still want to keep the quality of the shirts up i don't want to buy really crappy t-shirts i want the t-shirts to be nice this is the type of t-shirt we sell and it's kind of true tested i wash all my stuff on the hottest setting i don't foo-foo my laundry whack powder in whatever junk is on that little shelf goes in there hottest setting i want it clean and they don't shrink they don't do anything they're good quality so let's start getting orders filled and george will be here any minute george came in just in time with the coffees oh yeah thanks brother whole bunch of orders going out we did get an order from a guy in Puerto Rico, but his address is a little funky and the computer doesn't like it. It keeps giving us an error message, so we will update you if that works. But for right now, 
Puerto Rico is, eh, I don't know if it is gonna ship. Yeah, the, the Hawaii one we did, I didn't even notice it was Hawaii until I was second checking the address before the label printed. Yeah, so we put a box full of stuff like that, and it was like 16 bucks, so that was awesome. Yeah, Puerto Rico should be the same way, but maybe it's how the address is It might be the address. Something. Yeah, we don't know yet. Last time I did a box that size to Hawaii, and it was UPS, it was like $45, which it depends on the contents, but it's hard to hard to charge someone that much shipping for something that's only like a $50 item. Yeah. So thank you USPS and all of our stuff is getting there quick. Everything's two to three days, so I am impressed. Yeah, it seems to be all across the country. It's like three days from the longest yeah, one. This is fantastic. I was always afraid of using uh, USPS, but out of 170 plus orders, every single one has got there yeah. on the money. So three, thank you. Three days to California, so. And our mailman, our new mailman is awesome. If he watches, uh, he is awesome. He's yeah. our, like our favorite mailman. And that goes a long way. My reminder, look at see my reminder is, check ship into Puerto Rico. That's the kind of <laughs> reminders that I keep setting for my own. Right now we've got a full 70 going into one of our large resonators splits into dual 65s and then we're going into a couple small double pass mufflers with a pretty clean oe looking tip so it should be fairly quiet and of course a flow much much better so let's get a quick sound clip first we'll bring it down start it up get a cold start clip then we'll burp the throttle and then we'll get it back on the dyno Rev it real quick. Wow. Almost sounds stock, doesn't it? Yeah, it sounds like different. <laughs> That's awesome. That's exactly what we're looking for. So everything is done under here. Catch cans on, radiators on, heat shield is on. Um, basically, take it to the dyno and uh, let it warm up. Do some run, see where we're at. All right, back on the dyno, we're going to get it up to temperature and just verify everything works. It's still really quiet, the fan's on right now, but can't, you can't even hear it, it's terrific. We get the laptop plugged in so we can see what the temperature is. So the fan is uh, doing its job, what I fixed. about this kit look at this 250 line right here it's making over 250 foot-pounds of torque by 4500 look at that beautiful so we have the factory OEM Honda top so a little different on this one he actually wanted the blue which I gotta say I actually like it on the blue car it looks pretty classy look at that and it's the OEM one, so something special about this, we actually had to pull some serious strings to get this. This is the last blue top there is. It's been discontinued for quite a while. We have it. We have the last one in existence that I know of, so. So there it is, the top is on. Do you want to do the honors, George? Oh, I forgot about that. you got to do that. That's part of it. It's like the, the smashing the bottle on the ship. I finished it so long ago, I kind of forgot. <laughs> All right, this is kind of one of those gratifying moments. And as all the young people say, it's, um, I don't know what they're saying right now. My kid used that term the other day. Satisfying. Satisfying. Everyone uh, says that now. Yeah. And I went, what are you talking about? He goes, this is so satisfying. Uh, and it was cutting wood. Yeah. I go, really? Is things good and not bad? <laughs> so, <laughs> OEM, Honda, top. That's how you know it's Honda. It says it right on the glass. You can't fake that. But this... Again, I would have never done this until I saw it, the dark blue on the light blue, but it looks it looks classy, I think. I'll make it a quick perspective here. 
this one is so quiet with being kind of data logging it making sure it is happy this one feels and sounds like stock but a whole bunch more power which is what we're looking for we don't want it to act like a race car be annoying to drive nice smooth clutch you can't feel the clutch engagement it's quiet it's really quiet which is no compromise that's what we're looking for do this one-handed by the way ones are not really known for torque anyway if you ever drive an AP1 and an AP2 back to back you can really notice the difference but wow does that make a difference that's, that's like driving a V6 now but still quiet that's what we're looking for all right so I just got the wheels back from Glenn's so we took wheels over there and had them refinished we now have a bright silver with a little bit of a metallic in it just to make it brighter uh, he did the full you know restoration did the wheels put the tires on but these wheels will make a big difference. The five spoke looks kind of dated. It's a 16 inch diameter. It looks small. The tires obviously are different on this car because they're mismatched tires. He has back tires on the front, front on the back. But I think this really gives the car a newer look, changing the wheels. Now the car is clean. It's got a nice top. So the wheels, these are of course AP2 wheels and the tires we went 10 millimeters wider like we said earlier in the video. So it makes a drastic difference. The bigger wheel and tire combination looks so much better. Gives the car a much more modern look. Of course, helps with the handling too. A little bit stiffer sidewall makes the car handle better. But what a transformation. Look at that. The car now looks new. It doesn't look like a 1999 anymore. It's got the newer style tail lights, a brand new blue top, and of course those 17 inch wheels, and of course, uh, quite a bit more horsepower but what a transformation that's the old wheel right there you can see how dated it looks and even the top looks a little old i really like the blue top on the blue car but what a transformation thanks for watching don't forget hit the subscribe hit the like we'll see you on the next video and if you get a chance check out the lht store at lhtperformance.com thanks for watching see you on the next video don't forget enjoy your cars